Our gospel reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 14, but I read to you from verse 8. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works of themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Let us pray. Dear Lord, help us in this time through the power of your Holy Spirit that we will hear your word and believe in you. Amen. Greetings to each and every one of you and I think today we are on day 44 of the lockdown and I must confess that my Sundays are getting more difficult by the week. Not being able to just gather together as God's people, to see your faces, to hug and greet you, to laugh and share with you God's goodness. But today more especially because it is Mother's Day And I'm sure it must be most difficult for many of you as it is for me. And so in light of this, I just want to share a little bit about Mary, our matriarch. And it's possible that I have shared about this before. You see, history and tradition has always taught us to always look at the patriarchy and the patriarchal characters of the Bible. And we rarely look at the women amidst these stories. And very simple example in today's gospel story, Jesus points us to believe in him so that we may know who his father is, so that we can believe in the father too. But Mary, Mary was the mother of Jesus. Mary bore the Son of God. She is to be admired for her bravery and she must be loved for her her devotion to God. And God chose Mary for what could be arguably the most important job in history to bring our Savior Jesus Christ into this world. Without Mary, we wouldn't have Jesus. Mary was the only human being that was with Jesus throughout his whole earthly life. Mary loved Jesus during her pregnancy, at birth and after birth. And as a mother, Mary would have remembered every detail of her pregnancy and birth and the life of her son. Mary loved Jesus as a young child Mary loved Jesus in the temple at the age of 12 and they were amazed uh, when they found him in the temple teaching and listening to the word of God and at his profound wisdom. Mary had pondered all these things in her heart, wondering what this all meant. Mary loved Jesus at the wedding in Cana The sight of his first miracle, Mary is the one who pushes him to turn water into wine. And of course, Jesus' response, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. And we may identify of a rebellious child. Mary pushed like all mothers do. They push their kids because mothers know certain things. They have a maternal instinct and Mary was no different. Mothers know things about their children and as children, we seldom listen to the warnings or the advice or the wisdom of our parents. Mary loved Jesus when he told the crowds that Mary and her other sons weren't 
his true family. She was concerned that he hadn't eaten. And Jesus says those who did the will of God were his true family. She loved him even in that moment of probably a, a hurtful time. Mary understood Jesus and so loved him so. Mary loved Jesus at the foot of the cross when she had to suffer the unbearable pain of watching her son being executed and she could do nothing about it. The customs of the society clearly dictated that she bathed him, fed him, changed his diapers, sewed his clothes and did everything. His childhood was Mary's focus. Mary was an expert weaver and more than averagely skilled in most of the household arts of the day. She was a good housekeeper and a superior homemaker. Mary was usually cheerful. Mary seemed always composed and courageous, wise beyond her years. And Mary was the most blessed of all women. And so to all the women today, all mothers, known and unknown. May today be a blessed Mother's Day. And as I mentioned earlier, our Gospel story today, Jesus points us to His Father. Jesus' message to us is to believe, to believe, to believe. Four times in three verses, Jesus challenged His disciples and he challenges us to believe in who he is, what he said, and what he did. Jesus tells us that the, the way to eternal life, though unseen, is secure. Jesus tells us he has prepared the way to eternal life. But the only issue that we have is our willingness to believe. How will we know the way to God? Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? And perhaps in this difficult time, this time of this pandemic, of the coronavirus, we may be asking the same question that Philip asked after being with Jesus for three and a half years. Where is God? Show us. Show us your Father. Show us God. And oftentimes a lack of faith has been cleverly disguised as a lack of facts. Philip did not lack facts. He lacked faith. And so like Philip, maybe we too, after seeing God's goodness and miracles in our lives, we still don't believe. To believe means uniting with Jesus. That means we are united with God. Trusting Jesus means we have all the benefits of being God's child. With knowing Jesus Christ, we have come to know God. In hearing the teachings of Jesus, we have heard of God's love for us because Jesus, as he says, is in the Father and the Father is in him. And all that Jesus said, all that he did, he declares are not of his own words or his own works, but are those of the Father who dwells in him. Jesus was the full embodiment of God, who is the very nature of God, who is the very character of God, who is the very substance of God, who is the very perfection of God, who is God in all of his perfect being. Today's Gospel offers us so many comforting words from Jesus. Our Gospel reading begins with with Jesus saying, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And these are assurances that Jesus doesn't leave us. God doesn't leave our side. And so in this time, Jesus also offered his disciples those comforting words as he does the same to us today. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. And so in this time, I may not know your needs or your troubles, 
I may not know your sadness or your pains. I may not know any of your challenges that you are facing. But God, the God who is an all-knowing God, knows. And so as Jesus directs us to believe, believe, believe in God. And as Jesus says, believe in me. Jesus continues to be our comfort, our guide. Believe that your needs will be met. Believe that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Believe that He will bring comfort to you. Believe that He will guide and direct you through all your challenges. Just believe. Believe in Him today. Believe in Him tomorrow. Believe in Him every single day after that. Every single moment of your life, every second, every minute, every hour, believe, believe in Jesus so that you may also believe in God. Jesus' promise of an eternal life is secure. In, when Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life, as the way, Jesus is our path to the Father. As the truth, He is the reality of all God's promises. As the life, He joins His divine life to ours both now and eternally. Jesus is our tangible image of the invisible God. Jesus is the complete revelation of what God is like. I pray God's blessings to each of you, your family and your friends. To all the women, believe in yourself. Believe in God our Father. And so may the Lord bless us and watch over us. May the Lord make His face shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of I will make their darkness bright Who will bear my light to them Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord Is it I, Lord? I I, the Lord of wind and plain, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will say, Finest bread I will provide. Till their hearts 
be satisfied.